Welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at the Boogeyman of JavaScript, the static keyword. A lot of uh, beginners are struggling, trying to understand what it's for. And in this video, I'm going to try to take the role of your teacher and show you what it's for. Let's just take a look at my screen. What do we see here? Well, there is the PP class. And what I want to do is when I make a new PP, I want to count how many PPs I have. And for that, we are going to use a static variable named counter. Where is the pen? Here, static counter and st set it to zero by default. And we are going to increase this variable each time in the constructor. And why? Because when you create a new instance, the constructor is automatically called. So we just gonna increase this variable. How? We are referencing it by the class name. See? Here, here we go. What a nice drawing. This is how you reference static variables. So static variables, static methods, and static whatever is basically a class bound variable, not an instance variable. What does that mean? Every time you create a new instance in this class, these variables are not going to be affected, not going to be pushed into the class instance itself. They remain as they are. So in this case, we are automatically increasing this counter. So what should happen? Where is the thing? So let me execute this code and see what happens. Now we have peeping count is three as expected because we made three of them. Yeah, so that's simple. So we just printed the PP counter. There's one commented line here. What happens if I am try if I try to reference this variable via an, an object, via a class object? So for example, I have this PP one, which referencing to a new PP. I will try to print this counter. Will it, will something happen? Well, let's just try out. Let me see. PP count from instance undefined. What does that tell us? That tells us that this variable doesn't exist, as I said, in an instance. In a in a class instance, this this doesn't you can't reference it like that. So so far I think so good. So a static property or a static variable is to be used in as a class variable or a class method. Okay? So that's all you need to know. Now Let's step it up a bit. So here we have the same PP class, but now I've also added a non-static variable, a property counter, and also kept the static counter property. And the question is, if I will increase both of them in the constructor and print both of the values, what's gonna be printed onto the screen? We'll take a guess. And the question is, will it actually work? Is this possible? Is it possible to have both variables because in the previous example it was said to be undefined so logic tells might be possible but to verify that why don't we just run the code and see what we got so we have three pps in each pp in the constructor where is the pen in each pp in the constructor we printed pp this and pp self so pp this one pp self one pp this one pp self 2 pp this one pp self 3 so this increased as in the previous example as it as it were here we always get one why because and by the way the code worked so that means you can have both a static variable and a non-static variable by the same name which is great i mean i don't think you should ever do that but at least you know it you can do that so in every instance, the PP variable, I mean the PP property, non-static PP property, is set to 1 because it was increased, so it printed 1. And for the static property, it was increased and the value it was actually kept because we were increasing the class static property, this. Am I actually confusing you more? Maybe. I don't care. Let's continue. What's the next step? In this case, we have not just a static property, but also a static method. Here, the count method. This count method does 
not much. It returns us the PP counter, the static PP counter. How how is it done? We just simply reference the PP counter and we'll print it into the console. So let me just run this code and see what happens. So the PP counter is three. Well, that, that was easy, right? That, that was easy. So in our static method, we can actually reference the PP. But uh, the question is, and let me switch the tab, can we do it like this? Can, can, can I say this dot counter? What's gonna happen? Will this code run? Will this code fail? What's gonna be printed? That will it be printed? Well, logic tells you that this keyword should not work in a static context because this here is not in an instance, but who knows? Let's see what happens. Oh, oh, the PP counter is three. H how? You may say, okay, the probably this variable was accessed, right? No, it, it can be because it will be one each and every time. Here, one, here, one, here, one. Three individual properties, each of them one. And this one says three. And to prove my point, let me just, what if I just delete this property, right? Let me just, let's just delete it. What's gonna happen? Let me run the code again and PP counter is three. So somehow the static method is accessing this PP counter, this, this static property right there. So, so somehow this became the PP. Yeah. So in JavaScript, in a static class, using the, this keyword is actually a reference to the class itself. In other languages, you could use self, it's a common keyword, but in this case, in JavaScript, that doesn't work. In here, this is going to refer itself, I mean, in this case, the PP class. Easy. I think the water is clearing out slowly. We are getting ahead. You're probably understanding what I'm trying to say. But now I'm going to confuse you the best way I can by showing you this. What's 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 this? What's what what's what the heck? Well, we have the same PP class. Do not worry. We have the counter, we increase it every time you make a PP, and then return the counter. Let's just let's just make a new class that extends the small PP, which extends the PP class. That means that by default, every property and method should be inherited in the new class, right? So the counter, so the constructor, so and the, the, the count. Does this gonna happen? Yes, I, I will tell you right now, that's, that's exactly what's gonna happen. They are inherited. But here's the problem. What if I wanna change the counter value to start from minus three in the small baby class? Naturally, if this was a normal class, you would just say, okay, just counter equals to three, but this is a static property. Will it actually help? Will it actually change? Well, let's let's try, right? Let me just remove this. Let me just, let's just take a look at the small PP counter first, okay? What's gonna happen? Oh, no, it stayed minus three. But why? Why shouldn't like override the previous? In a normal class, you could like literally override it and use this one, right? Yes, but not here. See, in our constructor, see, we are explicitly telling that you should increase the PP counter. And this doesn't gonna automatically change to small PP. I think that's clear. And the count function, which is the same here, we are using this as the keyword, which is going to reference the small PP. So when we are calling here the small PP.count function, it's going to automatically reference to the small pp counter. Is it worse? Is it is it worse than before? No, it's not. It's just slow steps, slow steps. But still, you want to change the counter value without touching the parent class. So how? In this case, you probably want to make a new constructor for the small pp class and change the pp to the small pp. And remember, we can't use this in here. This, 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 not, this, not gonna work because 
you should say uh, that, okay, let me just do this. Yeah, that's, no, 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 that's not gonna work. It's, it's not gonna reference, this is, this is a non-static method. So it's, it's gonna, not gonna reference the PP class, okay? It's gonna reference the PP object. In our new constructor, we'll change the PP to small PP, but also, unfortunately, we need to call the parent constructor. For, and for that, you're just gonna call super. And unfortunately, we need to do this because without that, uh, our class, our code is not gonna work. In JavaScript, this is necessary. And not all languages it's necessary, but in JavaScript it is. And there are very good reasons for why. Let's take a look what's gonna happen right now. Small pp counter zero. Hey, we're making progress. So we made three small pp's. It was minus three, minus three plus three is zero. So it seems to work. That's, that's very convenient, right? But what happens to the pp count? Take a guess. I will let's let's print now the pp count. We haven't made any pp, but it still says we have three. Well, because small pp also counts as a pp because it's extended from the small pp. I mean, it's extended from the pp. In this case, it's it's not the reason. I'm just making jokes. It's because we need to call the super here in the constructor and that automatically increases this pp counter and in this case it magically makes sense because a small pp is a pp and we are making basically a new pp object so we want to count towards that so it does make sense and uh, if i print both but i don't know if i should print both we get three and zero as we should one more thing can I actually access both of these properties from the small pp class? Well, sure, you would just use the small pp and the pp, right? So what if I want to take a look at what the sum of both of both the small pp's and the pp's is? So something like this. The sum function will return the pp counter and the small pp counter, the sum of the two counters. So let's see if that works. It's three, zero plus three, it's three. But this isn't very elegant because usually in a static function, you should avoid using the class names if possible. Because what if it changes, whatever, you already have this constructor. I mean, you know, so what, how, how can I reference the small pp and the pp? Well, the small pp, you know, you can just use this, right? So I can just change that. But what about this? Can I somehow reference the parent class? Yeah. You can use the super keyword, super, not super, super keyword. You can use the super keyword. So here we go, Sup. super counter plus this counter. Let's see, does that work? Well, sure, it does. With the super, we are referencing to the PP class and with the this, we're referencing to the small PP class. And boys, that's all I think you need to know about the static keyword, for now at least. With this knowledge, you can probably get through almost everything, okay? If you understand what it's for, then, then now you can imagine what you can do with it. I recommend looking up some design patterns maybe. In some of them, the static keyword is used for maybe creating copies, factoring objects. It's a really great tool. I think this concludes the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope uh, you learned something new. I really hope I didn't like confuse you even more. Leave a like and subscribe. And uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. And come on, don't tell me I'm dumb, okay? I already know that. That's counterproductive. That, that it's it's not gonna help if you if you want to say I'm dumb you can say it but say something like you are dumb you should go to a mental hospital okay there's that's productive at least you're telling me to do something guys be always productive if you tell someone something insulting at least try to help thank you very much for watching the video and have a nice one goodbye